through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
reading in the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic good answers. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy. And may you entirely spirit, soul, and body be preserved, blameless, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. And testimony of John, when the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you so we can give an answer to those who send us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, or Elijah, or the prophet? <clears throat> John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one, one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Yes. yes. Amen. Because finals are over, right? Some of us graduated already. Praise God. Well, here we are on this third Sunday of Advent. Uh, there was there's a story of a television interviewer walking down the streets of Tokyo uh, around Christmas time. And just like in America, Christmas shopping is a big commercial success in Japan. In fact, when I was in Japan a few years ago with my family, um, Christmas was already being celebrated at November, in November, 
uh, Tokyo Disney was all the shows were in uh, Japanese, but it was we know it was Christmas uh, parade and everything. So you can see how the Western uh, world, the influence of Christmas has gone uh, throughout the world. But anyway, back to this interviewer. This interviewer stops a young woman um, on the sidewalk and asks, what is the meaning of Christmas? Well, she laughed a little bit and she responded, I don't know. Is it the day that Jesus died? Well, of course we know that Christmas is not the day that Jesus died. Jesus was born on Christmas Day. But there is some truth to her answer. You see, we walk around our lives sometimes, even in this season of hope, joy, peace, and love, as if Jesus died and is still dead. Huh? And that is why we need to be reminded to rejoice always. These are the words of St. Paul for us on this third Sunday of Advent. In fact, all of our readings speak of rejoicing. That is why today is known as Gaudete Sunday or Rejoice Sunday. And I wear the color rose in the midst of the penitential violet or purple. Because we rejoice in the knowledge of the self that the Lord is at hand. In just a week and one day, we will be celebrating the Feast of Christmas. But let us not pretend that the world is already perfect. And that is the cause of our rejoicing. Because we know that the world is not perfect. We are still broken. We are still um, have hate and anger in the world. There are still lots of emptiness, broken-hearted people, those who are captive uh, to sin. We live in that kind of world, and yet we are called to rejoice. We rejoice because Christ came in history. We rejoice because Christ will come in glory. We rejoice because Christ still comes to us in mystery. Yet many people in the world still live in desperate, intolerable situations, and even worse during this day and age. And how can we then say rejoice always to these? Well, perhaps we can draw our hope and joy from the characters from our readings today. John the Baptist, the Blessed Mother in our responsorial song, and St. Paul. In today's Gospel, we hear the person of John the Baptist again. Unlike last weekend, the evangelist does not portray the Baptist preaching repentance. Although this is not to deny that he preached a need for a change of heart, because people did flock to him to be baptized after hearing his message. But the evangelist chooses to insist today that John the Baptist is the one promised in the prophecy of Isaiah. That he is the one sent from God to testify to the light. You see, John is a recipient of the light, and that is his identity. He is the one sent to share with others what he has received. He is the voice crying out in the desert, making straight the way of the Lord. And that promise of Isaiah also spoke to those captive Jews in Babylon to open their hearts and minds to the possibility of joy, to the presence of hope for a future for a chosen people. But the baptizer is not the Christ, the Messiah. In fact, he denies that he is the Christ or the Elijah, whom the prophet Malachi insisted would return before the Messiah came. John the Evangelist only insists that the baptizer is a witness, a witness who is to testify to the truth. But what is the truth? Well, the truth is God's living presence is in the world, in the person of Jesus, 
fully divine, fully human. This is the hope of which Isaiah speaks. This is the hope of which Mary sings in our responsorial song. Jesus become, becoming one of us through his incarnation is the hope for a future. And not only for a chosen people, but for all of creation. And so therefore, our hearts are then lifted up in hope and great joy. Because the eternal word of God becomes flesh, becomes one of us to show the face of God and to demonstrate His mercy for those who stand in awe of His greatness and loving kindness. He fills the hungry with good things, but the rich He sends away empty. Isaiah's song rejoiced that the Messiah is able to bring glad tidings to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, announce favor from the Lord and vindication by our God. And that is exactly what Jesus has done and continues to do. But what does that mean for us? Well, we are the Lord's disciples. We too are challenged to live like the Lord. Because through our living the way of Jesus, we too bring glad tidings to the poor. We too help heal the brokenhearted. We too proclaim liberty to those who are captive to sin and announce favor from the Lord and vindication by our God to those that we meet. I know that the way of Jesus is a contradiction to the way of the world, and that will be a challenge, huh? But that's why we're here to have strength, to receive nourishment, so that we can go into the world and proclaim the good news by our very lives. Because the Lord wants us to help the poor, the broken, the captives, those in prison, those who cover up the emptiness that they experience with temporary satisfaction. Because our God is a personal God, not one who is far away, but one who is with us and wants to be with us. My friends, only in Jesus are all our desires fulfilled. Perhaps this is where this week's message should lead us, to study the witness of Isaiah, to sing the song of Mary, to delight in St. Paul's message, and to be the voice crying out in the desert. Because this voice makes an avenue for the Lord to enter into our hearts. The coming of Jesus is the reason for our joy. Because God is with us and remains with us until the end of the age. May this celebration then, this final week of Advent, be one that reaches into the depths of our spirits, lifting us up to new hope for compassion, mercy, and peace. I believe in one God, the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. The God did not be consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified with Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in 
accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, receives from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We call to mind our needs and joy, for in God we have the answers to all our prayers. For the church, that we may prepare the way of the Lord, removing the obstacles that block the grace we receive from God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may see justice and peace spring up in every nation, every community, in every family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who find it difficult to handle the stresses of this holiday season may realize the comfort and peace that Jesus offers to those who are burdened. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our student community, for all gathered here, that we may refrain from every kind of evil and retain everything that is good, as Paul called upon the Thessalonians to do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers on the parish website, prayer book, and for those who know them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor, the homeless, those who have to suffer, <coughs> suffer through the cold during this time, this winter season. And the people of God will respond to their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, you fill the hungry with good things. You send the rich away empty, you lift up the lowly. Hear the prayers we make and answer them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's leave our auditorium. Someone's on the second one. Someone's on the second
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Thus are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of, uh, us of all our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Sunday. Uh, we hope you have a blessed week and please stay well. Uh, and for those students who are traveling back home, please travel safely back home and return back to us uh, in the coming uh, spring semester. Uh, and be safe and make good choices. <laughs> and we'll see you when we get back. Uh, next weekend will be the fourth Sunday of Advent, but also in the evening uh, will be in the beginning of the Feast of Christmas. So. Uh, the fourth Sunday of Advent will be the Masses for Saturday, December 23rd at 5 p.m. And then Sunday morning, December 24th at 9 a.m., 11 a.m. Those are the only three Masses for the fourth Sunday of Advent. In the evening of next week, Sunday begins the Feast of Christmas. The 5 p.m. Mass, the Vigil Mass, and the 10 p.m. Mass in the Night. And then on Monday, December 25th, there's only one Mass at 10 a.m. So we hope to see you at both the fourth Sunday of Advent and the Feast of Christmas. So please take home a parish bulletin for that schedule and a reminder for you uh, next weekend. Also, I wasn't here last week, but we did publish our annual finance uh, report. And so if you didn't take one last week, there's still a few copies on the credenza. Um, on the credenza there for you to take home. If you have any questions or would like to meet with me about it, please um, email me or call the parish office and I will be glad uh, to meet with you um, about, about the finance um, financial report. Also, thank you for your continued generosity, um, your stewardship of your time, talent, and treasure, and for allowing us to continue our mission here at the Newman Center. Uh, bringing the good news of Jesus Christ uh, to the University of Hawaii at Manoa and beyond. And if you are thinking about your end of the year giving uh, to the charitable organizations, we hope that you will consider the Newman Center as one of those places uh, this year. Okay, so thank you again uh, for your generosity. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. So that rejoicing now with devotion and the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when He comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. So we go forward, we sing song number 63, song number 63.